you don't have to go back to basics if you stay in basics. The Steps Made Simple by Dan James The last chapter we learned something about step one. The chapter more about alcoholism from page 30 to page 43. This video is going to be dedicated entirely to step two. Just a quick recap about step one. I accepted my problem as well as accepting the solution. I made up my mind to go through with the process. They outlined the spiritual answer and program of action, which a hundred of them had followed successfully. Step one isn't about just admitting that I'm an alcoholic. It's about accepting the solution. But this entire video is going to be dedicated to step two. Step one started on page 30 and ends on page 43. Just some information. It's easy for me to admit that I have a problem, but most alcoholics have to be pretty badly mangled before they really commence to solve their problem. And this is the very end of step one. Just a little bit of history before we begin step two. Many doctors and physicians agree with our conclusion. One of these men, staff member of a world-renowned hospital, recently made a statement to some of us. What you say about the general hopelessness of the average alcoholic's plight is, in my opinion, correct. As to two of you men, he's talking about Bill and Dr. Bob, this is referring back to the doctor's opinion. The man that was a staff member wrote the letter originally. As to two of you men whose stories have I, I have heard, there is no doubt in my mind that you are 100% hopeless apart from divine help and you offered yourself as a patient at the hospital. I would not have taken you if I had been able to avoid it. People like you are too heartbreaking. Though not a religious person, I have profound respect for the spiritual approach in such cases as yours. For most cases, there is virtually no other solution. Once more, the alcoholic at certain times has no effective mental defense against the first drink. It's going to be hard to count how many times the big book mentions the first drink. Except in a few rare cases, neither he nor any other human being can provide such a defense. His defense must come from a higher power. And that brings us to step two. The insanity was the thought perceiving the first drink. Step two brings us to chapter four, we agnostics. The spiritual principle behind step two is hope. Everything in between page 44 and page 60 is all dedicated to step two. And I'm going to try to make this clear. Hope comes before faith. At one time, I could only hope that it was possible for me to stop drinking. I'm going to jump right into it. In the preceding chapters, you have learned something about alcoholism. We hope we have made clear the distinction between the alcoholic and the non-alcoholic. And people will ask this question a lot of times in a meeting. How do I know if I'm an alcoholic? And here's the answer on page 44. If when you honestly want to, you find you cannot quit entirely, or if when drinking, you have little control over the amount you take, you are probably alcoholic. And then comes the solution. If that be the case, you may be suffering from an illness which only a spiritual experience will conquer. To one who feels he is an atheist or agnostic, such an experience seems impossible. And that's definitely going to be a huge controversy. We're going to meet a lot of people who are atheists and agnostics. We're going to give them an answer out of we agnostics. But to continue as he is means disaster, especially if he is an alcoholic of the hopeless variety. To be doomed to an alcoholic death or to live on a spiritual basis are not always easy alternatives to face. My sponsor used to say, I'm not marching towards heaven with a banner, but I'm backing out of hell and thus going in the same direction. But it isn't so difficult. 
about half of our original fellowship were of exactly that type. Here's a very important point. If a mere code of morals or a better philosophy of life were sufficient to overcome alcoholism, many of us would have recovered long ago. The top of page 45, the bottom of page 44. And that is a dilemma. Lack of power was our dilemma. But we found that such codes and philosophies did not save us no matter how much we tried. We're going to meet a lot of people that were good people, and I talked about this before in step one. They balanced a checkbook, raised a family, but they could not defeat alcohol. Lack of power, that was our dilemma. We had to find a power by which we could live, and it had to be a power greater than ourselves, obviously. But where and how were we to find this power? Well, that's exactly what this book is about. Its main object is to enable you to find a power greater than yourself, which will solve your problem. And if you notice, the word problem was not plural. At this point, they're just talking about the drink problem. That means we have written a book which we believe to be spiritual as well as moral. That means, of course, that we are going to talk about God. Here, difficulty arises with agnostics. Many times we talk to a new man, watch his hope rises. There's the word hope. As we discuss his alcoholic problem and explain our fellowship, but his face falls when we speak of spiritual matters, especially when we mention God. For we have reopened a subject which our man thought he had nearly evaded are entirely ignored. Moving to page 46. This is in the middle of page 46. We found that as soon as we were able to lay aside prejudice and express even a willingness to believe in a power greater than ourselves, we commenced to get results, even though it was impossible for any of us to fully define or comprehend that power which is God. That's an important point because that's the solution. That's the answer for me to tell any of my new men or women that I'm going over the steps, that it's just a willingness to believe. And they admitted themselves, it was impossible for us to fully define or comprehend that power, which is God. That's a big, humbling, humility statement. They can't even define what God is. So I wouldn't spend that much time worrying about it. If you're atheist or agnostic, then you don't have, we don't have to define God. All we have to know is that in and of myself, I'm not going to be able to conquer my alcoholic problem. Much to our relief, we discovered we did not need to consider another conception of God. Our own conception, however inadequate, was sufficient to make the approach and to affect a contact with him. As soon as we admitted the possible existence of a creative intelligence, a spirit of the universe underlying the, the totality of things, we began to be possessed of a new sense of power and direction, provided we took other simple steps. I think that this is a very important note, provided we took other simple steps. Faith without works is dead. We have to remember that the doctor gave a prescription in the doctor's opinion, he said, we work out our program on a spiritual as well as altruistic plane. And that means we're spiritual, but we're also going to do work for others without asking for anything in return. The word altruistic. We're still on the bottom of page 46. To us, the realm of the spirit is broad, roomy, all-inclusive, never exclusive, or forbidden to those who earnestly seek it is open, we believe, to all men. That means whether you believe or whether you don't believe, or whether you're open to possibilities, you, the door is open for all men and women. This is a crucial note on the top of page 47. When therefore we speak to you of God, we mean your own conception of God. This applies 
to to other spiritual expressions which you find in this book so they're letting us know right here when we speak to your god throughout this book moving forward and backward that, that what they're talking about is your own conception of god god as we understood him is underlined in any original format under steps three and under steps 11 and that's very important that's what brings the whole program together without that we'd all be sitting around arguing about who's god we should be talking about we're still on page 47 here in the middle we need to ask ourselves but one short question do i now believe or i am i even willing to believe so this lets anybody in the door willing to believe i don't have to believe yet moving to page 48 here we often found ourselves handicapped by obstinacy sensitiveness and unreasoning prejudice obstinacy means that we were stubborn stubborn and unwilling to yield i apologize once more you're going to have to read most of this on your own i'm just going to try to point out some important pointers a lot of these pages 48 49 and step two are trying to find ways that we can relate to the fact that there's a power of the universe and using metaphors to open our minds to possibilities even though i'm skipping through these pages i highly recommend you read this as promised in the last video in step one we talked about what insanity was and in step two we're going to define what restoration to sanity is we're on page 52 here we agnostics the bottom of page 52 when we saw others solve their problem by a simple reliance upon the spirit of the universe we had to stop doubting the power of god our ideas did not work but the god idea did and that's an important point in step 12 it says coming to a meeting sober is 12 step work at its finest and that's the most important thing alcoholics anonymous ever did for me is there were people in a room that were sober without that I wouldn't have believed it was possible for me. And I want to make a note. If you look at step two, it was so simple, I almost missed it. Step two on the wall and the steps actually reads, came to believe that a power greater than ourselves could restore us to sanity. It doesn't say in. So that translates to, do I believe that it can solve my problems and the drink problem? Do I believe that the program can work for me too or do i believe that i can be sober and not drink a day at a time is important that's the most important thing i ever came to believe in we have to remember that they sent a catholic priest to alcoholics anonymous he believed in god and that's different than believing that a power greater than yourself can restore you to sanity and you don't have to drink anymore i want to make that as a real important note this is why this step two is hope the Wright brothers almost childish faith that they could build a machine which would fly as the mainspring of their accomplishments. Without that, nothing could have happened. We agnostics and atheists were stuck to the idea that self-sufficiency would solve, solve our problems. When the others showed us that God's sufficiency worked with them, we began to feel like those who had insisted the rights would never fly. And that's the metaphor, I believe, in my opinion, when they're using the Wright Brothers' Kitty Hawk of Light. Every alcoholic at some point in his life doesn't believe that he could fly or be sober. At one point, it was just hope. It hadn't developed to faith yet, which is the spiritual principle of step three. And we'll get to that in the next video. But hope had to come before faith. Hope with a track record is faith today i haven't drank a day at a time for many days so i believe that i can fly or that i can be sober so this is a very crucial note we believe the rights would never fly or we believe at one time in our life that we could never get sober 
when we became alcoholics crushed by self-imposed crisis. We're still on page 53 here. I would not have looked for a solution unless I was crushed by a self-imposed crisis. Okay, I'm going to move past some of these other pages. I highly recommend you read it. Step two is too long for me to read everything. Top of page 55. Though it emanated from the, our best minds, what about people who proved that man could never fly or we could never get sober? Yet, we had been seeing another kind of flight, a spiritual liberation from this world. And this is what they're defining what the spiritual liberation is. People who rose above their problems, particularly the drink problem at this point. We're still on page 55 here. This is a very important point. Actually, we were fooling ourselves for deep down in every man, woman, and child is the fundamental idea of God. It's not saying God, every human being has the ideal of God. Page 55 still. We finally saw that faith in some kind of God was part of our makeup, just as much as the feeling we have for a friend. And for those of you who are agnostic or atheists, this is a very important point. It doesn't say God actually exists. It's just saying that it's part of our makeup to believe in God. So that really gets me in the door. Okay, I'm moving on past uh, some of these other pages. Page 56. Okay, on the bottom of page 56, he had stepped from bridge to shore. For the first time, he lived conscious companionship with his creator. But just pre previous to that, he talks about it poured over and through him with the certainty, the majesty of a great tide and flood. So this is an important statement, but what I want to say about this is that there's a footnote that directs us all to the second appendix in the back of the book. I highly recommend that anybody go and read that. It'll help me understand step two in combination with some of these. That change sufficient enough to bring about recovery from alcoholism is a definition of a spiritual experience and it manifests itself in many ways in many different people. So it doesn't have to be so abrupt like this person had. There's the educational variety as well, which can happen slowly over a long period of time. Okay, so here's where we're gonna to get to the very crucial portion of step two, I believe. On the top of page 57, say for a few brief moments of temptation, the thought of drink has never returned. The thought of drink has never returned. And I want everybody to understand this. Here's where we're going to describe what the definition of the big book suggests, the restoration to sanity. The thought of drink has never returned, and at such times, a great revelation has risen up in him. Seemingly, he could not drink, even if he would. God had restored his sanity. So this is the important note I promised in the video about step one. Step one, we learned about the definition of insanity the thought preceding the first drink. And here we are in step two. We can explain to our new man or woman the restoration of sanity. What is this but a miracle of healing? Yet its elements are simple. Circumstances made him willing to believe. He humbly offered himself to his maker. Then he knew, even so has God restored us all to our right minds. To this man, the revelation was sudden. Some of us go into it more slowly. But he has come to all who have honestly sought him. When we drew near to him, he disclosed himself to us. The restoration to sanity is the thought of drink has never returned. And I'm going to point out here on the very bottom of 56, no later vistitude, which basically means situation in life has shaken his foundation. So no situations we go through loss of homes, loss of jobs, loss of spouses, maybe sometimes the spouse that we shouldn't be with, and that can be worse than loss of spouse sometime, but through my experience. He had been through all these situations and the thought of drink has never returned. 
and that's the definition of restoration, if that makes any sense. So it's explaining it here. Seemingly he could not drink even if he would. God has restored his sanity. So we agnostics is a long chapter. I couldn't get through it. I tried to get through it as quick as I could. Here we are in chapter 5, how it works. Page 58 and 59. Those are the readings in every meeting. And in the next chapter, we'll be going over step 3, which starts on page 60. Being convinced we are at step 3. The spiritual principle behind step 3 is faith. So everything in between page 44 and page 60 is all dedicated to step 2, which is hope. And then next comes faith. Thank you and God bless. I hope you enjoy this video. Don't forget to donate to the 7th Tradition. Like and hit the notification bell and share this video. Thank you and God bless.